Hey creators, welcome to our channel. I am Ko, and with this video, we're introducing a new series of tutorials in which you'll get to practice your skills on different topics. This won't be our usual in-depth tutorial where we cover every single tool in detail, but more of a way for you to get inspired while still receiving some very useful tips. We'll kickstart this initiative with some 3D composition. Let's get started. I love 3D modeling, and normally I would use a tool like Blender or ZBrush to build our models and then import them inside Fusion. But even if Fusion is first and foremost a great compositing tool, it can handle some geometrical modeling just fine. Today's project is based on a model that we created for a previous video, and while it's quite simple, it's going to let us play with geometries, light, and animation. Inside a new composition, I'm going to lay down my essential, starting by a 3D shape that we're going to modify from plane to sphere. I'm going to send it to the first viewer. Then I'm going to add two merge 3D nodes. The first one is going to receive all our geometries, while the second will be dedicated to the camera and lights. Unlike its 2D counterpart, which is limited to only a background and foreground input, the merge 3D tool can be used to collect an unlimited amount of nodes but there's also a lot of reasons why you might want to use multiple of them. With the second merge node selected, I'm going to add a camera and spotlight, add a renderer that I'm going to connect to the media out. I'll go to the camera, transform, and move it along the z-axis. And same for the spotlight, I'm going to click on transform, move it along the z-axis, and you can see that actually there is no light whatsoever, and this means that in the renderer 3D, Lighting and shadows is deactivated. And now you can see that when I'm moving the light, it's changing the cone of light. And a good tip to make sure that the spotlight is always facing the sphere, I'm going to check the option Use Target. Here, I could click on Pick, Drag, and target any element. You can see that the spotlight is following. But instead, because the sphere is basically at the origin, I'm going to leave the default values at zero. Now, if I move the light up, you can see that it's always facing the sphere. Same if I bring it down. Now this light is supposed to be our top light, so I'm going to bring it up. In the Controls tab, I'm going to change some parameters, like for example the decay type, that I'm going to go for no decay, where the light is never fading, to something more natural like the linear. And I see that the light is a bit too far, so I'm going to bring it a bit closer to the sphere. All right, perfect. Change the light color to some blue. As I want the spotlight to have soft edges, I'll bring the pin number angle to the maximum. Now I'm going to add three more spotlights simply by duplicating the existing one. As you can see, when I started adding extra lights, the light went completely off inside the viewer. And this is because of this Merge 3D that was added automatically when I added the extra tools. And you just need to check the option Pass Through Lights, which is a way to control which part of the composition these lights are allowed to illuminate or not. Did you notice that while the sphere is actually white, it looks when rendered that we have a black sphere with some casted color on it. And this is because we are lacking an ambient light that we're going to drag, bring to another tree and connect to the same Mercury node. To create a ring that surrounds the sphere, I'm going to use a torus as base. If you want the light or shadows to be visible inside the 3D view, you can go to the menu right here and choose Lights. 
Let's add the vertical bar to the ring. I could also have connected the bar right to the ring, but because the ring is now the parent tool, any transformation that was applied to the ring is also applied to any nodes upstream. And as you can see, the bar is now flipped 90 degrees. So I'm gonna put it back to the merge tool. Just give me a second to clean up my nodes. Next, let's add some material to give it a glass ball look. And for this, I'm going to add the fall of tool. Now, the triangle shape that will stay fixed inside the ball. And for this, I'm going to use a cone that will be heavily modified. Next step is to add our image, and for this, we're going to use a loader tool. This image is quite large, so I'm going to add a resize to bring it to something more reasonable. To make it work along the fall off, I need to add a material merge, to which I'm going to connect my image. Now, to properly resize and position the image, I'm going to add another tool, which is a texture transform. I'm going to select the sphere and rotate it along the Y axis for 180 degrees, so we can see the other face. I'm going to make some space, select the texture transform, add another material merge, add a text, and another texture transform to be able to place it properly inside the scene that we're going to connect to the material merge. Since we added those textures and the material to the sphere, you can clearly see that it's not being affected by light anymore. And this is because we need to add a tool that will control how the surface reacts to the light. You can use Blin, Fong, Ward, among others to do the job. And I go for Blin, press Shift, and place it just after the second material merge. Go to the ambient light, raise the intensity, and that's much better. Now I'm gonna bring together closer different lights. I'm going to quickly add some 2D elements to the background.
our model is not complete and we just need to animate it. You can either animate directly a shape or a Merge 3D node, depending if you want to animate individually objects or a whole group. This is also a very efficient way to animate a group of light together. I'm gonna add some keyframe. The first one at zero degrees. Go to the last frame. Add another one at 360 degrees to the full turn. I am going to select the Merge 3D node between the axis and the ring to animate them together. Go to the transform. Add a keyframe at the first frame. And one on the last. But the last one, I'll set it at 720. So the ring is moving twice as fast as the sphere. We're going to test our animation, but there's something that's really important for you to understand when working in 3D compositing. Let's select the render 3D node. And here we can see that the render type is set at software, which means that the CPU is handling the rendering. And if we play our animation, you can see clearly that the CPU is being taxed, it's ramping up, and that the animation is not particularly smooth. Few inches later. And it is only when the composition is fully cached, as we can see with the green bar under the viewer, that the animation can be played smoothly. Now let's look at what's happening if we switch to OpenGL, meaning that the GPU is going to handle the rendering. I'm going to play it through. Okay, it's way smoother because the GPU is handling the rendering, but we are getting some weird artifacts in the transparency. And this is because in texturing, under transparency, it is set to Z buffer fast. This is a way to calculate which element has priority. And if we set it to something more precise like sorted, accurate, or quick sort, we are getting some red nodes right away. And it's because we can't render shadows using this method of sorting and the OpenGL renderer. Now, if I can play it, I have a quality rendering while still using the GPU, even if it's a lot more demanding on the calculation. The OpenGL renderer also can't give you smooth shadows and this is why, for your final output, you'll want to use a software renderer. There you go. This is how you build a simple 3D animation. And if you have any questions on the subject, please comment down below. We hope that you enjoyed this new format. If that's the case, give this video a like, and we'll see you in the next video. See ya.